So, one of the most common injuries you'll see in practice, a lateral ankle sprain. We're going to go through the anatomy to show you exactly what this is, as well as all the evidence-based treatment that we can do to help our patients. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So, lateral ankle sprains, there's only one place to start. Let's dive in to our anatomy model. So here we have the lower leg. Let's start by going to the lateral ankle and then removing all that other stuff so we just have the main ligaments of the lateral ankle. And there are three of these. We have the calcaneofibular ligament, which as the name suggests, is where the ligament joins from the calcaneus to the fibula bone here. We also have the posterior talofibular ligament, which is at the posterior side of the ankle joining from the talus to the fibula. And then finally, we have the anterior talofibular ligament. This is by far the most common one that's injured, and this attaches from the anterior talus to the fibula. So as we said, the ATFL is by far the one that is most commonly injured. And the way that this injury commonly happens is when our patient has an inversion injury, an inward sprain of the ankle, particularly when this is combined with plantar flexion, that movement where the ankle has its toes pointed down. So when does this happen in practice? This is gonna be with your basketball players, your netball players, where they might be jumping. And then as they land, because they've jumped like so, you can see that the foot's in a plantar flex position. So they also land in that position and then they lose their stability, which is where their ankle falls into that plantar flexion inversion position. Now, as you can see, because of the anatomy here, the location of the anterior talofibular ligament means that when you have that plantar flexed and inversion movement, the dorsum or the front of the foot gets stretched with the plantar flexion and the lateral side of the ankle is what gets stretched with inversion, meaning that it's more likely to be the ATFL which gets injured in this scenario. So that is your lateral ankle injury. How do we actually treat this in practice? Well, thankfully, we've got brilliant evidence to help us know exactly what to do. That comes in the form of this brilliant BMJ, British Medical Journal article from Verberg et al, 2018. And I'll read you the title, Diagnosis, Treatment and Prevention of Ankle Sprains, Update of an Evidence-Based Clinical Guideline. Boom, exactly what we needed. So what modalities can we use in the short term to help our patients through that inflammation stage where they've got that bruising, that swelling, and all of that pain? Well, there's two key things that I looked at from this article. The first is the use of anti-inflammatory medication. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are pretty controversial because of the fact that they can have side effects to different organs if they're overused but also because they seem to be described as having the potential interruption to the inflammatory process because they are anti-inflammatories. And does that have an effect on healing? Well, thankfully, this article from Verberg et al. highlights that the short-term use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories is helpful in the management of these patients within the first 14 days without having too many side effects. So that's certainly something that we use in practice. And the second one is ice. We talk about ice all the time when it comes to these acute injuries. Unfortunately, what we do know about ice is that it doesn't have as much of an effect on swelling as we perhaps hoped. But we do know that ice does have an analgesic or a pain-killing component to it, which can make it useful in practice. So people will either crush ice into a rolled up towel or put some frozen peas in that damp cloth as it were. Always important to make sure that you've got a barrier between your skin and the ice in that form of a towel and you need to make sure that you're regularly checking the patient's skin to make sure it's not burning, that it's not getting too red because that might be an indication of potential tissue damage. And so when it comes to ice, a lot of the guidelines these days report that you shouldn't be using it for more than, let's say, 10 minutes because you then put your patient at risk of those tissue damaging effects. So short term use, always use a barrier like a cloth or a wet towel and make sure that you're checking the skin to look for injury whilst using it. So. What about support? Should we be putting our patient's ankle in an orthopedic boot or immobilizing it? 
Well, actually, the evidence points away from this idea. If I may read you some of the stuff from Verberg's evidence, a minimum of four weeks in a lower leg cast following an acute lateral ankle sprain results in less optimal outcomes compared with functional support and exercise strategies for a duration of four to six weeks. So there you go. We shouldn't be totally immobilizing these patients, but the use of a functional support, like a soft support, which might be either a, a lace-up support or a semi-rigid brace, can be useful for pain relief, whilst also allowing that patient to remove that brace so that they can move their ankle and do their exercises. And then exercises. You won't be surprised to hear that physiotherapy was a huge recommendation within these guidelines. So what kind of exercises do we find ourselves using in the early stages? Well, some really simple stuff like some ankle circles or some up and down ankle pumps are really useful ones just to get started. It means that the patient can try and get that range of movement going without over aggravating their ankle. And I commonly am giving this to patients doing these for about 30 seconds every Every hour to make sure that they are regularly getting that range of movement in. Now alongside the exercises in that early stage a really important question that always comes up about weight bearing. Should we be giving our patients crutches or not? Now for me this is where a physiotherapist's role is so so important. I commonly find myself giving patients crutches in those very early stages but with very specific education. We want the patient to know that they should be weight bearing at this time and therefore the crutches are to help them put weight through their leg, not so that they can just swing their leg in the air as they walk through as fast as possible. We want the patient to know that it's okay for them to walk, that they're allowed to walk and in fact the crutches should be used with the direct goal of getting them back to full walking, not just so that they can use it as a protection aid. So exercises in the midterm, one of the key focuses here is to improve strength as well as range of movement. And therefore, I may commonly find myself giving TheraBand exercises, as you can see here, particularly into the movements of plantar flexion and eversion in order to improve that inversion stability in the future. And we want to be building up the repetitions here, even up to 30 reps in a set, so that the patient builds that endurance strength so that they can maintain stability throughout a whole match or an event like so. And then naturally, a major component is going to be single leg activity to help with that proprioception. So things like single leg stands with some reaching, some single leg squats perhaps, and that can be gradually progressed, or even some lunges will all add an element of proprioception to them. And then naturally, in the end stages when things are going really well, we want to be practicing things like jumping and landing and changing direction to ensure that the patient's ankles can absolutely cope with the same movements that injured their ankle in the first place. So there you go. I really hope that gives you some ideas and some tips that you can use with your patients. And if so, please support us by smashing that like button. It's the number one thing you can do to help our channel. Subscribe for all our updates and check out our social media at Clinical Physio on Instagram and our website, clinicalphysio.com. Thank you so much for watching, guys. My name's Khalid. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.